Welcome to the First Congregational Church in Binghamton. Today's worship is online and it will be shown on Facebook and YouTube. Our mission statement, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome at First Congregational Church. We want to begin with the call to worship, and this is a paraphrase of the message by Eugene Peterson. When God is my shepherd, I don't need a thing. God has bedded me down in lush meadows and found me quiet ponds to drink from. True to God's word, God will let me catch my breath and send me in the right direction. Even when the ways go through death valley, I will not be afraid when God walks at my side. Your trusted shepherd's crook makes me feel secure. You serve me a six-course dinner right in front of my enemies. You revive my drooping head, my cup, brings with blessing. Your beauty and love chase after me every day of my life, and I'm back home in the house of God for the rest of my life. We want to say a prayer, and then we will read the scripture reading. Before that, let's uh, have Nancy play our opening hymn, how lovely, Lord, how lovely. If you can follow, dear God, I have been experiencing forgetfulness. I tend to forget where I put my car keys, and often I had to pause and ask why I went upstairs. Sometimes I even forget that you are with me. Remind me that you are a loving spirit dwelling within me. Help me to sing your praises in spirit. And in truth, open your eyes that we may see your amazing grace at work in our lives. Give us courage to tell others about it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our scripture this morning is from John chapter 9, verses 1 to 41. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth, and his disciples asked him, Rabbi, 
who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, It was not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said these things, he spit on the ground and made mud with the saliva. Then he anointed the man's eye with the mud and said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar were saying, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some say, It is he. Others say, No, but he is like him. He kept saying, I am the man. So they said to him, Then how were your eyes open? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud and anointed my eyes and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and received my sight. Then he said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. So the Pharisees again asked him how he had received his sight. And he said to them, He put mud on my eyes, and I washed, and I see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others say, How can a man who is a sinner do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him, since he has opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, Is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. But how he now sees? We do not know, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents say these things because they feared the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if anyone should confess Jesus to be Christ, he was to be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, his parents said, He is of age. Ask him. So the second time they called the man who had been blind and said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, Whether he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, why did he do? What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you will not listen. Why do you want to hear again? Do you also want to become his disciples? And they reviled him and said, You are his disciples, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man... We do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Why, this is an amazing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet you open, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, 
But if anyone is a worshipper of God and does his will, God listens to him. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could, not, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born in utter sin, and will you teach us? And they cast him out. Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and having found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and it is he who is speaking to you. He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped Jesus. Jesus said, For judgment I came into this world that those who do not see may see, and those who see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard these things and said to him, Are you saying that we are also blind? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no guilt. But now that you say, We see, your guilt remains. Today we want to talk a little bit about spiritual blindness and also this story of Jesus. Jesus healed a blind man. But before he could do that, the Pharisees and scribes wanted to argue with him because they said to Jesus, whose fault is it? Why is he born blind? Is it the sin of the parents, the sin of the child? And uh, Jesus is not interested in uh, blaming or in cause and effect. Jesus said, you just have to look and see what God is doing, what God can do, and what you and I can do for this blind man, what others can do for him, instead of blaming and condemning him and trying to uh, find the cause and effect whose problem it is. But Jesus has a way of teaching the scribes and Pharisees what we call the spiritual uh, blindness. You find that this is one story where Jesus used his saliva. He took mud. He mixed it and put it on the face and the eyes of this blind man. And then he asked the blind man to go and wash his eyes, and he was healed. You know, the saliva is something that society do not look kindly. You know, when somebody don't like you, and they spit at you, what does that say? It's a sign of, you know, anger and expression. But saliva is actually... Uh, what Jesus used, and I often ask uh, couples, you know, how their mindset decide what is good and what is bad. For example, uh, if you uh, say to your wife or your husband before you are married, you know, you have a cup and there's drink and there's saliva in it, you know, would you actually... Uh, uh, drink that drink with your wife's saliva? And people say, oh no, I would not do that. And then I say, well, if you kiss your wife, whose saliva are you swallowing? You say, oh, that's okay. You know, kissing is okay. But it's the mind that makes it clean or not clean. So sometimes, uh, you know, people have a mindset. Jesus said, it's not what goes into your mouth that makes it good or bad. It's what comes out of you. Because what comes out of you comes from the heart. And Jesus was trying to help the scribes and Pharisees because they were hostile towards Jesus. They are constantly trying to find fault. So when Jesus did this, 
Jesus purposely used the saliva and take the mud and then mix it to try to teach these people that it's the mind that makes what is good or what is bad. And uh, so here, Jesus was trying to help this blind man. What did the Pharisees say? It is Sabbath. You cannot do work. Saliva, mark, and all that is work. And you see, they were so hostile that even the father of this blind man was afraid of them. You know how sometimes fear can control us. If God has done things for you, if Jesus has made a difference in your life, are you afraid to tell other people? You know how people get hostile? They laugh at you, they make fun of you. And here, the father even was afraid of the Pharisees. So he says, don't ask me. My son is an adult. Ask him. And uh, so this blind man said, I don't know much, but I do know that I was born blind. I do know that Jesus did this for me, and now I can see. So there was this long discussion, and you find that the bottom line is that we should not be afraid to tell other people about the good news what Jesus can do for us. There's a lot of things that uh, you find that uh, it is hard sometimes because fear gets into us. For example, coronavirus. There's a lot of fear right now. And sometimes people react out of fear rather than uh, uh, we should take precaution. I'm not saying we should not take precaution. But I think we should also use our mind to see where God is leading us and not be afraid. And if God is with us, what is there to be afraid of? Sometimes we ask ourselves, you know, what's so important? Who are we? Are we defined by our birth, by our passport, by our income? or by the many things that we have, by our education, by, you know, where we live, the neighborhood. Not really. You see, a simple virus puts us all in what? One little village. Could be very far away. The whole world is now a village. It affects all of us. We are all in this together. Therefore, we need to help each other. We should not uh, stop loving each other. Virus cannot stop us, even though we are away, even though we quarantine ourselves at home, even though you cannot come to church physically. But there's a, such a thing as you are here in spirit. You know, sometimes people say, I cannot be there in body, but I'll be there in spirit. And even though you cannot visit people in the hospital, a lot of people now can do FaceTime. They can call on the phone. The uh, schools, they are helping children with food. You may not be able to eat in the restaurant, but you can always order what? A takeout and then take it home. So there's a lot of things that we can still do if we know that this soon shall pass. And if God is with us, who can be against us? We are going to uh, have prayer, and we're going to pray for all the people affected by this virus, especially for nurses, doctors, hospital staff who have to deal with this every day. We need to pray that God will give them strength. And for those who are at home, we need to pray that they will do whatever it takes to stay healthy. And usually, uh, we will also send cards to these people. I think it's still legal to send get well cards, right? And uh, so even though you cannot see in person, in spirit, you can tell people that you are thinking about them and help them read your 
get well card so you will brighten up the spirit. Someone say, why are you always smiling and happy? You don't have any problem or stress? I say, not really. I do have, but I choose to be happy. Nobody can make you sad unless you choose to be sad. Even though there are troubles, distress, you can be happy because it's a choice. So if we make the choice that God is with us, and if God is with us, who can be against us? We are also reminded, the church says that uh, if you want to give your offering, you can send it in. The expenses of the church continues. You can uh, also find out if there is a way to give online. And we thank you again for your support for the ministry of First Congregational Church. And now we will sing our closing hymn, which is a very wonderful hymn, Breathe on Me the Breath of God. If the Spirit of God is in you, fear not. Nancy will play that for us. The hymn says, I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the comfort, guidance, and challenge of the Holy Spirit be with each one of you now and always. Go in peace, and the God of peace go with you. Amen.